And when you were director of the FBI, you actually talked a lot about what you learned about leadership from uh, probably the biggest star in the NBA. Yeah, LeBron James, a man I've never met. I resemble only in being the same height and everything else is <laughs> his shoulders are about twice mine. But I admire LeBron James and he's probably about to find out I used to talk about him all over the FBI and say he illustrates what the endless pursuit of excellence looks like. I don't want to offend anybody, but he's the best basketball player on the earth today. There may be, you know, people have different uh -oh. views of that. <laughs> I'm sorry, year 15. So you can't make anybody happy no, this year. year 15 for LeBron, and he is still the king, the top of the game. But every offseason I've read, he tries to find a part of his game to make better, which is crazy because he's already better than everybody else. It's because he measures himself not against the others, but against himself. So I used to say inside the FBI, look, this is a great organization, but it's not good enough. It can't ever be good enough. We have to find parts of our game to make better. Look at LeBron James. And so that's, that's how I've used him as an example. Everyone wants to get their hands on him. Nike, Adidas, the Cleveland Cavaliers, his high school teachers. But some things about James need clearing up. First being, talk that his head is bloated. Before I was in the stable house that I'm in now, I had moved at least seven times in a year. And when I was living, when you was talking about Elizabeth Park, down in the projects, in those hard times you see everything from crackheads, you know, to drug dealers, to gunshots every night to police sirens, and I think it just made me stronger. Another claim is that he's another of the Michael Jordan youth. Oh, that he's in love with just the dunk and the jump shot. He wants to uh, make the great pass as much as he wants to, to dunk the ball. I like to share the wealth, you know? I just don't like getting all this for myself. It's all about the team. Be the first one to tell you he's never won a game by himself. I know every now I can go out there and score 50. I can easily be a ball hog, shoot all I want. Because, you know, I got the, the real power to not do that because I want to see my team be excited too. And last year in the playoffs at halftime, I had five points, nine rebounds, and nine assists. And a guy had asked me, you know, it was a pretty bad halftime, isn't it? I said, how? You know, I'm sharing the ball. I'm getting rebounds on the, to the point guard. And at halftime, we win by 35. You know, it's not bad at all. I'm loving it. Not that he doesn't have a lot of Jordan in him. In practice, he's so competitive that everyone, including his coach, is fair game. How was that not a part of the play? Gio was right here. The ball was right here. We're going to the play. Go. But even if you don't, Go. you still set it up. But hanging out with LeBron James, second year of LeBron, 27 points, seven boards, seven assists per game. When you look back at your second season, what stands out the most for you? Um, you know, just the way I improved during the season. And uh, the, uh, the, the way I was able to relay with my teammates, the way they, you know, let me become the leader of the team. And, and that was very special to me. You know, uh, I really respected my teammates, you know, by letting me become the leader of the team and, you know, really uh, put them on my back. You're a guy that the NBA basically has placed a mantle on your shoulders and essentially said, carry this league into the next era. Did you ever feel like you didn't want that responsibility? Uh, no. Why? Why not? Why did you? you I, I've you... always, I've always been the, the leader of the pack. I've always been the commander. I've always been, you know, the person in front, you know, uh, I've always wanted to be the leader. I've always wanted what everybody else didn't want. So, you know, when things is placed upon me, it, it's another challenge. If that if that's the label they're gonna give me, and they want me to, you know, to carry the torch of the league, I have no problem with doing that. I have no problem with doing that. Are you the leader of this team? Tremendously. Ain't, no question. Ain't no question. Are you a vocal leader? Vocal leader. That's that's the that's one of the biggest changes from last year to this year. Last year, you know, I'm a rookie. Uh, there's veterans on the team. There's people that was here before. Uh, I was leading by example. I knew I could lead by example, but it was kind of tough because I wanted to lead vocally. That's what I've always done, you know, telling people to do this, do that. And then 
you know, not being able to do that. And I didn't say I was restrained from doing that. I just didn't feel like it was time. But it's time now. So you'd get in somebody's face? Oh, yeah. One of my teammates. They're not practicing hard. They're not playing well. You'll get in their face. Yeah, I will. You'll tell a coach to sit them down if they're not acting right on the court. <laughs> well, I don't have that authority yet. <laughs> I might think that, but I'm not going to say that. <laughs> Late third quarter, you guys had about a 20-point lead. It was fairly clear the way this game was going to end, but I saw you doing that to your team. What did that mean? Uh, it's about grind. Uh, grind the game. You know, and that's our, that's our sign, you know, just to continue to grind the game. You know, also in the third quarter, I think I seen Rio doing like this to the fans. Uh, and I went over to him and said, it's not over. You know, we got a long way to go. It's not over. And, uh, you know, just wanted to try to stay focused throughout those last, uh, you know, I think 16s or so minutes. One of the things that make people gravitate to want to come to South Beach to play with you, whether it's Ray Allen taking less money, yeah. Shane right. Battier right. in DMPs during these playoffs, <laughs> now he knocked down big shots. Wow. No, LeBron pays them under the table. <laughs> <laughs> it's your unselfishness. And people yeah. don't pay attention to the responsibility of a right. great player. It's not just getting points, rebounds, right. and or assists. It's about involving the guys, making you feel like That's right. you have confidence in them, even when they don't have confidence yeah, I'll tell you in one themselves. thing, Jalen, man, and I think me and I watch so many clips of this guy right next to me. I get more of a kick on the floor than having my teammates make a shot off my pass mm -hmm. than me making a shot off one of my teammates' passes. And it just it, it feel it fills me up more when I know my teammates is involved in the game throughout the whole game. And the fact that, like you said, last year our closeout game it was Mike Miller, yeah, who yeah. came out of nowhere, didn't play. <laughs> Kaiser Sosa came out of nowhere, knocked down three after three after three to close that out. And tonight Shane Battier having DMPs. He had a DMP in this postseason for the first time in his NBA career. So you can imagine what was going through his head, and for him to stay ready and to hit six threes tonight, this is a true testament of our team and what type of caliber team we have. Everyone's not a leader, and we shouldn't expect everyone to be a leader. I think it becomes something that you want to do or you're born with it. And some people lead by example, some people lead by voice, some people lead by both. And for me, I felt in order for myself to be as good as I wanted to be, and, and at the same time, in order for our team to be as good as I wanted it to be, I had to be both. As well as we played last game, it ain't gonna be enough to win tonight. You gotta give more, dog. You gotta protect more, you gotta help more, you gotta sacrifice more in order to get this win. You have a lot of different styles. Let's 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 throw out some of them. You like wise teacher sometimes. Yeah. Tell me about that one. <laughs> I am man, I, I'm I got so like you said, it's me, I got so many different forms of leadership. And it just comes from my personality. Mm -hmm. You know, at times I can be silly. Straight three. Man, these beautiful fours got me looking like Iron Man. <laughs> mm -hmm. And at times I could be serious. If you know personnel, you know teammates, you throw it up to the rim. That's like you throwing that same pass to Shaq. Would you do that to Shaq? You want to throw that pass to Shaq. At times I could be like a teacher and be like, you know, focusing in on all my students. Yeah. Right. So I come right here, so if I need to step once, at least I'm only stepping right here. Right? At times I could be the student, you know, and, and to be able to have different forms of leadership has helped me because you have different personalities in the locker room. Everybody is not the same. The way I talk to D-Wade may not be the way I can talk to Chris, or the way right. I talk to Chris may not be the way I talk to, to UD, or to Bird, or to Rio. Big time, man. Big time, boy, what a play. Everyone's personality is different, so my leadership skills has different phases because I understand what I'm dealing with. I love you. I love you. They go crazy. Ah! Whoever misses is out. Whoever misses is out. Five, four, three, two, one. Sometimes you know the smile and leadership. Sometimes the playful LeBron. Sometimes you use that as a form of leadership. Yeah, absolutely. I, I got that from being around my, my childhood friends. We used to have so much fun, man. But we understood when that ball was tipped, this is, we're gonna have the most fun here. And I, and I just brought that with me to the NBA. When you're doing something that way and it's working and you're winning and you're not disrespecting the game, right. you, this is what you feel like is how it's supposed to be done. It's given me a sense of brotherhood in this league that is hard to come by. You have to accept, accept it.
Um, I think some people were born with it, but some people learn it as well. And, um, you know, for me as the leader of, of our franchise and the leader of my household and the leader of so many, you know, different, um, different things, I think it's the confidence, but it's also you practicing what you preach. I, I'm not a guy who just talks about it. I actually go out and do it as well from a basketball perspective or from a, from a leadership perspective with, with my kids and my foundation. Um, you know, we have a, a promise initiative where they promise me that they will go to school, they will listen to their teachers, they'd be great to their classmates. And I promise them that I will continue to be a great role model, a father figure for them and, and, and not let those guys down. So um, I take that responsibility and I don't just talk about it, I actually do it as well. So uh, when you're able to come through on your word, um, it, it allows the guys that you're leading, male or female, to be able to say, okay, uh, we can follow this person because he he won't let us down. No matter if it's no matter if it's going good uh, or or bad. I mean, you said how much it's taken out of me. I just I, mean, I wanted to take it all, you know. And uh, you know, and then you know after the game, I'm I'm able to kind of decompress for a little bit. Obviously, I'm not getting much sleep. You guys probably can see me right now. I'm not getting much sleep right now, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with not sleeping to be able to prepare myself and and mentally keep myself intact on, on what's, the, um, what's the main objective for me right now, and that's to make sure that my guys are laser sharp, get myself mentally prepared, physically prepared to go out and, and, and battle. And, um, um, you know, it's been, a, it's been a difficult challenge, a tough challenge, but I knew that. Um, you know, being the sole leader of a team and a franchise um, is taxing, but, you know, uh, I accept the challenge. Um, I accept it all, and uh, and I'm okay with it. One of the things I do love about this phase of your life is seeing LeBron James, basketball dad. <laughs> we had, saw this great moment with you and your son Bryce mm -hmm. the other day. So, like, if you're missing shots or making shots, don't worry about it, kid. Don't you did a, you played a hell of a game. You ain't got to worry about making shots or missing shots. All right, good job. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, man. All right, go with your team. Bye. Good job. What is it like for you to be able to be with them on the basketball court, yeah. give them those moments of advice? Uh, it means everything. I mean, for me, um, you know, I grew up, you know, without, without a dad. And, um, you know, I can only imagine if I, those words right there, what I, how I've been able to digest it. You know, as a kid, sometimes they go in one ear and out the other ear. But at the end of the day, you just want to do your job as a parent. And, you know, I sit down with them, you know, at, at night at times, and we kind of go over their homework and, and help them. Uh, even though you know the, the school work these days are a lot different than when I was in school, um, but just being around them and, and being able to uh, tell them what I've seen from a distance, and, um, and and hopefully that they can be able to take it with them. You know, not not only in that moment, but you know for years to come. Being a Laker, and the Lakers have kind of spoiled us around here because either they are winning championships or they are contending for championships. Yeah. Is that fair? It is fair. That's how it should be. That's how it should be. Um, that's who I am. Um, I've been like that for since I since I picked up a basketball. I was either contending uh, contending to win a championship or winning championships. My first two years ever playing basketball, I won a championship, and moved on to AAU basketball. I won a national championship, or I lost a national championship in high school. I won three state championships and lost a state championship. As a pro, I've won championships and lost championships and contended for championships. It is it is fair, and that's how it should be. I think. When you settle for mediocrity, then what are you what are you fighting for? So, as the fans, as the Laker fans, as myself, as a competitor, being a Laker, this is what it should be. We should we should have that that notion every single year. Put a championship club on the team, and we need to contend for a championship. Put ourselves in a position to contend for a championship, or win a championship. Mm -hmm. And why, why not? And when you were hurt and couldn't play. That had to just drive you crazy, didn't it? Because you're used to being on the floor. You, you're used to being in the battle. Yeah, I can feel it right now. I mean, I can feel it right now. I, I, I can feel the moment of, um, you know, that December 25th game, uh, us being in Golden State playing against the two-time world champions and us playing the way we played. I felt like our team was, at, at that point, we were right where we wanted to be, and we were turning the corner to be the team that we could be this year. And unfortunately, um, I went down with my growing injury. Rajon went down with his hand injury, both of us out for five and a half weeks at the same time. And, um, and it just hurt our ball club. And, and, and me being a leader, um, you can do a little bit in the suit, mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yeah. You could do a little bit in the suit. For me, I could do a little bit of leadership in the suit. But my command is being on the floor. My command is being on the floor and putting guys in the right position and covering for my guys and allowing the, my guys to cover for me when I make a mistake and things of that nature. Being on the floor, being in the grip, being in the foxhole. And for five and a half weeks not being able to do that just it, it, it hurt me mentally, physically, um, because I know what I came here to do. And this is I came here to play this game that I love and it just hurt me.